Gentlemen, let's turn our attention now to the official opposition, the Wild Rose. It has been, I, needless to say, a wild four or five months for them since Daniel Smith left the party. They just got a new leader a few days ago in Brian Jean. What do you see the prospects and the pitfalls for Mr. Jean and the Wild Rose, David? Well, you know, most people couldn't identify, most Albertans couldn't identify Brian Jean from a lineup. They don't know who he is, and so one of the big problems is he has to introduce himself to Albertans. And I don't know if they have the money or the organization or the skill at this point to create a campaign around him. I mean, they're starting from way behind. The other thing is, you know, he's far to the right of where most Albertans are. And so, you know, he could fall into the trap that, that Prentice sets. Uh, you know, you either, it's either me or, you know, look what you're getting. What about you, Don? What do you uh, what do you think their prospects and their pitfalls are? <laughs> I think the prospects, according to the polls, are actually quite good. The question is, have they got the party that can fill in the blanks that where people may want to send a Wild Rose MLA to the legislature? I mean, it's their 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 problems after the floor crossings were acute. Uh, they're a much smaller party with a much smaller campaign than they ran last time, and yet they find themselves virtually neck and neck with the PCs and the in the, the campaign and, and what they don't want, curiously enough, here they are a smaller party, a weaker party, but they want to look that way because the last two <laughs> last time what <laughs> happened to them was when they looked strong, they don't want people turning to them and looking at them and saying, oh, they're weak. They would rather be kind of invisible until later on in the campaign. Do you think that they, you know, that there's anything here that they really need to do in order to succeed, in order to either keep their status as the official opposition or even heaven forbid, you know, people, you know, entertain the prospects of them actually becoming the next government. Well, Don makes a really good point. I mean, you know, it's a David and Goliath story, and that's the, the story they want to write. But, you know, there is a swirl of anger. People are really disappointed. I mean, it's really tough times. And so where does that anger go? And Brian Jean could be the guy who just does the critique and becomes the ordinary guy speaking for ordinary Albertans and he doesn't have to be magnificent and glorious and and look like you know the king in fact he can play the opposite and and it could all come to him what do you think that Gene has to do to be successful you've talked to him a few times you saw him give his acceptance speech a few weeks ago he has to be reasonable uh, he has to be non-threatening the first thing he did was kick out a uh, a candidate who made a, a, a quasi a remark about moving brown people to the front for a photo, evidently a joke, but Brian Jean just said it was almost as if they staged it because holy smoke, uh, you know, Daniel Smith didn't do this during a campaign. Uh, and he did. He did it right at the beginning of the campaign. He, he's a pretty solid, experienced federal politician who has uh, lots of background. He knows how this stuff works. I mean, he probably knows a lot more about it than Danielle Smith did, to tell you the truth. Right. So I think when people see him, he seems to come across a reasonable guy. We know he's had a terrible personal tragedy with the death of his son. Um, and I think people are, are likely to say, yeah, uh, we can at least trust him with official opposition. Yeah, and he's one of us. I, I thought he handled that tragedy with his son with great, great personal dignity. Uh, and then, you know, again, positioning himself as, you know, I'm, I'm one of you. Uh, and look at Prentice. You know, he's distant. He's the manager. He's the big business guy. He's wealthy. He's the 1%. I mean, in some ways, he's really positioned quite well.